Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Richmond's First Fridays Art Walk to spread the message of freedom and to express some anarchy. So, thank you for enjoying this content. Thank you for, for watching, and please share and subscribe if you can. Thank you, and I'll see you at the Victory Park. That's the hidden bias behind government, and that only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's to the threat of abuse of violence versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Right? And, that's, and that's the matrix. This, this, they have a monopoly on the services they are forced upon you to accept for and pay for. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on schools, on national defense. And you don't have the freedom like Netflix trying to raise the prices overnight and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. Right? You have a freedom of economics, but you don't even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumers that's paying the salaries. Right? So that's, and that's the government. It's a violent monopoly. That's the hidden matrix. So um, what, what are your thoughts on that? That's interesting. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Yeah? yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, great. Uh, great. Um, Alright, so, so this more petition, this more stance that you and I share against uh, that violence of solving problems, it's, it's called anarchy. You know, by definition, like in science, anions and cations, and means without, arch means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules. We can still have a polycentric legal system uh, outside of their monopoly on law. We can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly on that private property run across the street. That's not right. So we can still have these rich, creative uh, communities of preferences and, uh, and, uh, and that will, will interchange and interact in, in, a, in a real free market. Right? Because what exists today is nothing but that. It's, it's nothing but a state controlled market. So we have no freedom to, to see what it would be like, how it could be like. Um, and, that's, and that's pretty much what I'm here uh, to talk about, I guess, uh, the truth behind government. But I guess I have pamphlets if you're interested. Yeah? So just turn to our community and turn away from government, right? Okay. Uh, they have a monopoly even on currency. Over 97% of the value of the dollar in your pocket today has lost its value, right? And, and people talk about, well, what about the poor? Well, that hurts the poor the worst, right? Uh, there's no incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress is depreciation value. Right. You ever heard of Bitcoin? Yeah. I was about yeah. to bring that up. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, what what have you learned about Bitcoin? He knows way more about it. I had a, a brief obsession with Bitcoin. Really? Yeah. I went into everything about it, like mining and everything. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, how did you turn out? I didn't. I didn't actually get to do it because I can't afford any of the equipment that it takes. Oh, to right, 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 right. Um, when did you learn about this? How, when, when, when? I heard about it probably two years ago, but I did a lot of research over. Probably last November, I think. Yeah? That's when I started really looking into it. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, and, and that's, and that's, right, so that, that's anarchy. That's yeah. what it'd be like. They don't have a monopoly. It's Bitcoin is not going to destroy you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The government hates it. They can't regulate it. They can't tax it. They have no control over it. It's like they hate it. Yeah. Uh, but Bitcoin's not going to throw you to a cage to compete against it, right? A guy tried to create real currency, hard currency, backed by precious metals a few years ago called the Liberty Dollar. I remember that. IRS came in, seized his assets, threw him in a cage. Sorry, we have a monopoly on currency. When people forget money, it's like another commodity, like a paper clip or a car, right? Bitcoin's interesting because there's scarcity in it, unlike the U.S. currency where they can print like monopoly money. Like, we'll just type that in and that's how much we want for today, right? Yeah. So that's really cool. Okay, so you get yeah. Bitcoin. That's, so that's a lot of stuff I pretty much try to come out here and talk about because that's cool. to, to go towards that, right? Uh, a voluntary way to, to interact. And yeah. uh, for me, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm about to put on another pamphlet that actually kind of talks about Bitcoin. So, Sweet. yeah. Oh, that's good. So can you tell me why maybe you kind of got out of that for a second? Or maybe what well, was... Well, uh, I, never, I never like strayed away from it. I just... I mean, where where would I go from? What? Uh, the how, yeah, how would I use that knowledge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not sure. Well, like, I don't know where to go. You know, they have apps now, right? Bitcoin does? Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, so they have an app. They have a... Uh, I have it. It's called Blockchain. So we can kind of trade. I read like, about that. Uh, read 0 0.001 Bitcoins or something like that. <laughs> we kind of interact with that, right? And and that helps, I guess, towards uh, agorism, towards like counter economics against the state. Because the state will try to find any other way to get in your happiness or creativity or whatever you want to trade. Right? They'll call it licenses or permits or uh, regulations or for your best interest, of course, right? Uh, so that's really cool. Right? Actually, probably on the first person I've talked to actually has a good understanding grasp of Bitcoin. That's here in Richmond, I guess. In yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's awesome. That's cool, man. All right, well, my name is Cal. Oh, my name is David. David, uh, well, pleasure to meet you, David. And yours? Marcy. Marcy, pleasure. Well, like, uh, at some point... Yeah! yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I'd like to make a workshop and actually talk about Bitcoin. Uh, so, like, if you like, ever want to meet up, maybe just to talk about it. Like, the person you said you've been talking into it for like two years, uh, that'd be very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah we have, have a like website a and yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. 
Cool. I, cool. I like. I, I'm I'm a big technology fan, so anything like that. Yeah. It's right up my alley. Nice man. Nice man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Giving me a second. Very good to meet you. <laughs> you guys have a happy first Fridays. Okay, you too. Take good care. Constitution of no authority guy. Oh uh, yeah, all right, all right. Uh, what did that think? Uh, so you read that? No, 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 the Constitution of no authority. I was talking to you about it, like maybe right. like two, but I'm sure that you talked to so many people. But actually, not, not so much. Have you, have you read through it? Yeah, I read it yeah, all, and I heard the think? audio tape. And everything. I think the one point that I thought was very interesting about it was uh, uh, saying that the ballot was like a bullet, and uh, you have to either, you know, like kind of like being inside of a war where you have to use it against your fellow neighbor or die yourself. But you know, like Andrew Spooner, he's kind of like a postage guy, right? Isn't he like a mailman or something? Well, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, so he's like the father of the three cents stamp. Uh, but actually, it's a good point that you bring up. So it's kind of like, uh, so like the Hunger Games, but they turn it to the voting games. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. They're forced to vote against each other, right? Uh, and, and, and that politics and devices. It. But yeah, so like over 100 years ago, uh, so like in the Constitution, you'll, you'll find, doesn't it explicitly say, Say that, they, that the United States government can have an exclusive right to creating a post office. This is that they can have. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he challenged that. He did. He was, a, he was actually challenging it. I thought it was <laughs> that was really funny of him. But I'm sure it died out though. That's how it works. Uh, well, the government forced him out of business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. So um, because the thing is, they used to cost like three dollars fifty cents, like in today's standards of currency. That's how much it cost back then to deliver a piece of mail. It's like that doesn't make sense. And he realized the reason why the cost was so much because a lot of the money was going to politically connect to people. Oh, okay. And so he created the American. Letter mail company, and uh, so we did it faster, efficient, cheaper, effective than the uh, U.S. government, and the government hated it. So, uh, so they tried to lower the prices, and he's like, "Well, I could lower my even more." And then they eventually uh, bordered him with so much legal debt that he couldn't, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't compete anymore. So they forced him out of business, and then. And then Congress just passed a law just no one's allowed to compete. They're like, we're not having that again. Hmm. Uh, and that's how, how you can see how government has a monopoly in services, yeah, exactly. right? Definitely. So you look at like uh, FedEx or UPS, they can only deliver packages. They don't have the infrastructure to deliver regular pieces of paper. Because if they did, they'd be threatened thrown into a cage, like the guy who tried to compete uh, against the US currency of the dollar. He tried to create the Liberty dollar a few years ago, IRS's. And, it's, and then just grabbed it. I'm trying to do the Bruno thing. You know? yeah. And then uh, grabbed it and just threw him in a cage and seized his asses. Yeah, I'm still double minded on whether or not currencies should compete and all that. I, I don't know about that actually. Yeah, um, what, do think about it? what do you think? Like each state making their own or each person uh, coming up with their own? Have you heard of Bitcoin? What, have you heard of what? Bitcoin. No, I haven't. All right, digital currency. All right, so like before 1913, there used to be a variety of different currencies. Towns had currency, banks had currencies, and they competed, and there was value in it. There was yeah. scarcity, it was backed by precious metals, and then all this stuff. Yeah, that's all. And then in 1913, the U.S. government says, whoa, all right, let's not, we're going to create a monopoly. Now, no one's allowed to trade in any other currency but in the U.S. dollar. And people forget, currency is like another commodity, like a toothpick or, uh, or a car, right? Uh, but it's just a commodity we can exchange in, in, uh, in, in kind of a measurement of value. So no one's allowed to trade except for the U.S. dollar. And because they have a monopoly on it, and like any monopoly, the cost of that always rises and the quality always goes down. And that's why over 97% of the dollar in your pocket today has yeah. lost its value. Yeah. Heard about so, all that. And then, but Bitcoin is different because it's uh, deregulated. Government hates it. They can't regulate. They can't tax it. They have no control. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, and there's real scarcity in there. So it's called Bitcoin. Bitcoin. B I T C O I. Bitcoin. Interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and look that up. Yeah, of course. Uh, nice course. seeing you, you again. too, man. You too. Oh, that's fun. Uh, thanks for I guess uh, reading about Alexander Spooner. Yeah, for me, it's like that's that was a real that was a anarchist. Life changing for me, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, thanks so much. Yeah, man. Have a great first Fridays, man. Thanks so much. Man. Take good care. And that's the hit advice beyond government. It only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of the use of violence versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I have this country is built. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, without <laughs> government, yeah, 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 yeah. So, what are your thoughts on that? I completely agree with you. Yeah. I, the reason I, I saw the sign and I was wondering if, I mean, uh, 
it's such an open-ended question, especially being in that we're in the yeah. world of capital. <laughs> I know, you right? know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things that you could have said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I happen to agree with to everything the south. you said. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm from California. Yeah. Um, I happen to agree with everything that you said. And, uh, yeah, so I mean, my, I guess I don't really have any questions. Well, my question would be more about this. Yeah. Um, so, what, so you're filming all these conversations. Yes. Um, First of all, do I need to sign a release? To no, be no, in this no, video? no. Or, 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 like afterwards, if you feel comfortable, you know, we'll put it up. We usually ask that for everyone afterwards, so we have a comfortability. So pretty much, so pretty much, just come here to talk to my community because they're afraid of actually using a real voice. They want to say our voice is a piece of paper, it's a chat, it's a lever used every four years, apathetic, looking for parking, wasting time in line. They're afraid of actually using a real voice. We realize that you and I can connect. You realize that you and I share these fundamental values against violence. You realize then we never needed a government to begin with. We can we can have rules. There's just no need for rules for rules. Currently dictating how best your life should be lived, right? Uh, so this more stance you and I already share. That, that's called anion, right? Like in science, anions and cations, and means without. Archie means political rulers, right? So we can have. Oh, it's my great friend Panzer. How you doing? Man? <laughs> So we, we can have rules, there's just no need for political rules. We can have a polycentric legal system outside of the monopoly of services that the state forces you into accept. But I think anarchy, like in the way that you just described, is particular to the current system that we have. And I, think, I wouldn't say I'm an anarchist in like the broadest, or like in the simple definition, maybe as it relates to the current system that we have. But I don't personally, I do think there's a better way. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? To, I mean, there's just like so many fucking people that there's got to be some way to organize. If, it, if we're talking about pure anarchy, yeah. you have a lot of organizations. You yeah, have not yeah, proper exactly. organizations. Yeah, and that, that's where I want to go. I don't want half a little bit of government or a tiny bit of government. Governments never become limited. You know, the last time we had this here was called 1776. Right, you know, yeah. where we are today, right. it always continues well, to grow, and your taxes always like, increases, like, regulations always like, increases. So I want to get to a point where we can turn to our community and turn them away from that government. Right? Eventually, Richmond's going to become another Detroit. They're going to, it becomes unsustainable, like Social Security. You'll never have that in your lifetime, right? Yeah. Right, and you, you can't use your grandchildren as collateral for that. You know, there are solutions, but the thing is, and the way that you and I interact in our lives, we don't use violence, so let's turn yeah, to that. You know, let's find a plurality of non-violent solutions to solve those problems without resorting to, I guess, taxation to leave people's wealth to fund that, right? Good ideas are not mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the, what are you doing with this All right, video? So, so, pretty much, uh, uh, with the video, so pretty much I have a so YouTube channel. I just go out and talk board? to people and uh, uh, trying to show people that pretty much everyone agrees that they don't have, I guess for the most part what I find there's, I guess, this hesitancy. It's like they think that everyone is, uh, it's like they have a hobbyist point of view. They were all kind of potential evil or something like that ever. inside. This is why you do the everything. But I'm trying to show, actually, we can share these fundamental more violence against this violence. That's why I always start off this question about this yeah. question. So like, you, you already have this moral integrity against that violence. We're just told everyone else does. Really, we're told by the government that any one of us could be a secret dexter Morgan, right? So don't trust each other. Don't trust your community. Don't, be, don't, don't talk to your neighbor. Turn to them Who's instead. Who's Dexter Morgan? Uh, I used to see Rick Miller on, on a TV show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Someone who hides in the crowds. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, I do have another question. How many people that come up to you and ask you what I asked you already agree with you? you know actually, I mean? like, yeah, yeah. Actually, more and more. I thought it was pretty much. Uh, the last, I've talked to maybe a good over 100 people. Pretty much everyone, maybe for exception, maybe three or four. Um, two of them were communists. Uh, one of them uh, was trying to be facetious and trying to troll. You know, trying to say, yeah, I'll use violence. And then they admit, actually, I was just kidding. And I don't. Because uh, I guess, in a, in a way, you don't want to admit that you're a sociopath. Well, you know, I do use fine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's really it. But everyone else agrees. And, and that's, well, I guess, my experiment, yeah. my project to show. Well, is but it's interesting because I feel like it does take, like, I saw the camera, the sign, you know, and it's like, I don't think the average person that you're going to really get in an argument with is going to come up to you and talk to you, yeah. which is unfortunate. Uh, but I was just curious if yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you had encountered a lot of this, like, visceral arguments being that we were in a. I guess it's a red state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it last time? It was red or blue? Yeah, I know. It always continues to change depending who's in charge. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You kind of, like, the setup is like, okay, well, more a liberal mind person that kind of shares his ideas is going to be down to have this discussion. Yeah. And if there was a way to kind of uh, 
I don't want to use the word bait, but just like uh, make it more open to people that, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of different beliefs. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? and, yeah and that's why I like anarchy, because it's a non political position. I'm not threatening you, you're pre existing. If you're well, it technically is. Democrat, no, you're right. I guess I'm just saying. Yeah. but yeah. there's a lot of baggage with that. Yeah, there is. So I'm just saying, let, let's let it go. Let's right, let go right, to right, politics right. and voting. Let's turn to each other, right? So, what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? How long does that take? Right? 75 years is not a metric success. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a game one scrap. It's like, I don't want to be 80 years old still holding a sign, right? Right, right? So I have nothing invested. I'm not saying vote for me. I'm not saying I no, want to be, no, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's really it. Let's let go of the policy. Let's, let's turn to some real honest conversations. Real but I wonder then if, uh, you know, like, your, your pitch or whatever, yeah. if you because you started off with just with violence, which yeah. doesn't really have to do with government. Well, well government again. So violence and de defining defining that I sort of done in the beginning. Violence defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their clinical choice, i.e., rape, murder, theft, and assault. Because that's obviously something that you're going to get all kinds of people saying like, no, I don't agree with violence. Right. You know what right. I mean? And so then, I then, but government like, would touch it. Yes. I wonder if the way that this is framed. Um, like I was saying, like leads a certain kind of person like myself or yourself to be like, yeah, let's talk about these yeah. things that we both already agree about, as opposed to talking about like violence, which is, you know, pan political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to I think you're onto some good stuff, and these Thank conversations you. need to be happening. But it's yes, just, and I, you know, you see this happening in political conversations all the time. It's just like the fringes talk more about what they all agree on, and then you just get further polarization. You know what I mean? Um, how long have you had this channel? Uh, I guess I've been doing it for a good year now. Uh -huh. uh, I just finally like invested in camera, so I've been kind of doing this for like maybe a good month and a half. Uh -huh. uh, no, I guess now I'm, I guess I'm a producer in my life where I can start doing this as, as daily and frequently as possible. And usually, I like at VCU doing uh -huh. this because I feel like for the most part, it's going to be the younger generation that turns to the father. Some others like, look, just let go, right? What do you violate first your ideas on me? What do you vote against me, your son? You know. Uh, so let, let's let's like reunite. Let's let's turn to this community. Uh, so that's pretty much I find that that's pretty much the direction. At least for the most part, they have more time to study and look into this that's matter. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, not pass out pamphlets. Would you like one? Sure. Yeah. So actually. Uh, so an anarchy and peaceful parenting campaign. Because uh, this, this is not just against just state violence, you have to kind of universalize it. All the rest is a preference, like government says, you're not allowed to steal, but we'll call it taxes. <laughs> right, right, right. So it has to be all violence. I guess it's not just state violence, but the violence between each other and the violence is done to children. Uh, you know, spanking only teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems in this world when they grow up. Yeah. Right? They kind of, they're, they're like sponges. They kind of absorb, okay, that's, you know, a uh, parent will hit a child for hitting another child. Right? It's like, well, all right, I guess that kind of makes sense for, you know, <laughs> consistently, like, but that's what, that's what they figure out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much why I do talk a lot about peaceful parenting and um, pretty much in, in that aspect of it. You know, it's, uh, I guess, the propaganda that we're told from the state. Yeah. So, oh, my name is Cal. Max. Max, pleasure to meet you, yeah, Max. Yeah, pleasure likewise. to meet you. Um, well, we meet monthly. We have philosophical discussions. Uh, pretty much uh, potlucks. Sometimes my uh, fire um, spinning friends will come over and do some of that and uh, fire pins and stuff like that. It's nearby in every city. Do you live in here? Uh, no, I'm on tour actually. I You're just, on tour? I just played in there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the yeah. fall line? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. How was that? Uh, it was fun. Yeah? yeah There's a lot of people in there. Where are you from? Cool. The band is from Brooklyn. I'm originally from the San Francisco. That's why you say you're from California. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But I moved to Brooklyn like six years ago. Right, right. Oh, so you're, you're now in Brooklyn now? Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And then we're we're doing a tour like through the south. Right. How, how's your experience? How's Richmond? How's, uh, uh, so far, so good. I mean, it's only the second day. Yeah. But I find that for the most part, despite like if you don't get into politics with people. Uh, like the southern hospitality thing is very real. <laughs> you, know I mean? right, so, you know, you were mentioned like 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 the the way you kind of set it up. I guess for me, the thing I like about a pol uh, I guess anarchy is that it's not a political position. So when right. someone says, "Well, I don't want to talk about politics," like neither do I. Right. Neither do I. It's right, no right. more. But you do understand that, like, just this, just that, like, yeah. carries so much back. Sure, sure. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so I like to bring it up afterwards. Right. right. If right, I were to right, say right. anarchy, yeah. Uh, but right. I'm not trying to hide it. You know, I have my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go black, so right. uh, you know visual cool cues and stuff like that. But I'm just trying to show that we already live in a state of anarchy. You know, right. there's no government here. You know, the fact that uh, we're, we're, we have a preference to talk and reason and discuss shows so we have a preference over you know nonviolence over you know. Oh, I don't like what you said. You know, right. and, and, and that aspect of it. So yeah, yeah. this already exists. Yeah. You know, we have a preference for for that. Um, I have a question for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can we like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. This will be turning off right now. What's the answer? The answer is uh, so They take anarchy. your money at gunpoint, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> All right. I already knew it.
<laughs> yes. And I agree. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Have a good night. You too, man. You too. Charlatan? No! It's the state immoral! They give us everything we need! I wouldn't exist without it! What's up, man? You know there's a nine day traffic build up in China? Nine day? Yes, awesome. nine day. Traffic is seen. Vendors have increased their prices like kind of like that. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Set Snickers bars. Uh, going anywhere yeah, for yeah. a while? Yeah. $10 Snickers bar. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, you got some TP? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we walked back over here. Is it recording? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it is. No, no, it's great. No, don't record. Okay. Oh, no, record. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. I'm good. How are you? How are you? <laughs> How you doing, Richmond? It's Panzer. I'm at Art Walk, first Fridays, and we're having some anarchy. Um, I don't know. Cal's, Cal's doing the anarchy thing. Uh, I'm a little bit weirded out. There's lots of people here. We're uh, explaining the power of the state to everyone, and uh, I'm hungry. I'm really, really hungry, and I thirst for freedom. So, have a good night. Panzer out. Where's my freedom fries? That was good, man. I think uh, education technology has a big part to do with it. I mean, I could just say the, the root of all evil is, uh, what, a, comp a competition for resources? So, I mean, that's an illusion in my mind. Understanding the world around you, like knowing chemistry, like, I mean, quite radically, turning your feces into fertilizer or whatever, or like, well, I mean, as radical as that sounds, that's still pretty simple. You put fertilizer in the ground, though it's not your own poop, you can find ways to manipulate the world around you. And I think from a scientific approach and understanding what's really going on the average person can take a lot back in a, when it comes to control energy resources there's not really a competition for resources it's a competition for the mind so education is where it's at especially the young they got to know how to manipulate the world around them in a scientific means like how to well, shoot, even when it comes to work, how to cut a tree down, how to turn that into wood, understanding what energy is, energy, that bright stuff in the sun, you know, you got to understand that. That's, that's where it is. So, I feel like one of the areas that, you know, people in Richmond, especially VCU students, but anybody, you know, whether you're working a part-time job or you're a professional, you know, you can really look to low-income uh, communities that, you know, whether they have um, food access issues or, you know, um, crime, high crime rates in their neighborhoods, you know, you can look to those neighborhoods and say, you know, what can we do to improve this because there's a lot of opportunity there that I think people overlook. So, um, one of the things I've been just really excited about and, you know, it's pretty much been um, one of the things I'm most passionate about, you know, throughout my whole life um, has been uh, car, working with Carver Elementary School kids. Um, when I was a freshman, I mentored a learning disabled student over there and I got to know some of the problems they have. I mean, you know, y'all know what school lunches look like nowadays and you know you got the cardboard pizza and the pepperoni and you know you ask one of those kids where where's the vegetables in that pizza and they'll point you know I just kind of messed up you'll ask them where are the vegetables in this in this uh, meal and they'll point to the pizza yeah. and you say what if you don't want the meat and you say well you take off the pepperoni because literally the only thing they were getting served was pepperoni pizza so it's just you know a really really big problem and I, I think people often over look at you know you can, if you're if you have a lot of money then you can go to an upscale grocery store and it's not a problem for you but if you look to these kids they're just growing up on fried chicken uh, school pizza and stuff like that so um, basically what I've been working on is uh, designing a, something called an aquaponic system for the greenhouse at Carver Elementary School and um, aquaponic system is basically a symbiotic environment where both fish and produce um, live together the fish provide um, waste which um, is in the form of ammonia which then gets converted by nitrifying bacteria into usable nutrients uh, for the plants and so you get really um, big dynamic plant growth and it's great for high production in small spaces which is perfect because the Carver Elementary School greenhouse is really small and narrow um, but it is just the right size for putting a 250 gallon fish tank 
two grow trays and then you have five columns of basically PVC with holes cut out and you can stick plants in there and you know have the water distributed through with, a, with one submersible pump and um, what you have there uh, the 250 gallons allows for um, the stability of the temperature of the water that's about the minimum that you want um, and the water though the temperatures will stay stable for the fish and um, the pump will allow aeration for both the fish and the plants and you know as a result what you're going to have is a great platform for students and, and the teachers to get involved in that will teach science technology engineering math stem which is one of the um play, think one of the fields that um the u.s has really fallen behind in comparison to other nations such as india um, in, um in, even england um china um uh, Korea, South Korea, Japan, they all have really strong STEM programs um, at their at their schools. And so um, what we need is we need low-cost solutions for increasing the STEM programs here. And simultaneously, we can um, actually address food access issues um, in low-income areas. And, you know, hopefully once this project gets started, we're going to have uh, to the students and the teachers, of course, will be heavily involved, but also the parents will start to learn about the message. And these are all open source technologies um, using low cost materials. Um, of course, the greenhouse or the, the Carver Ponics project will be using maybe a nicer fish tank. But, um, you know, if you're just going to throw something in your backyard, you can buy um, basically 300 gallon IBC totes and string a bunch of those up, and you can have a thousand gallon systems growing 2,000 pounds of fish. Um, and, you know, you can just have amazing food production abilities in small spaces. So I'm just really excited about the future urban agriculture, green construction, um, aquaponics, and just, you know, building a better future for the, for the kids and giving people the option to be sustainable, which really isn't present if you look around and you check out the convenience stores, everything's pre-packaged. We're looking to, you know, take out that packaging and just start something that goes straight from the ground like everything was meant to be grown. Thanks. I grew up in DC, I know there are more. Yeah! <laughs> right, the crooks right there. But you know what? Yeah. I gotta tell you, I'm voting for a Ken Cuccinelli because I don't want people to have oral sex. I want everybody to be really unhappy. Right? You know? That's the only, that's what politics is, right? Why do you have not government? You know, that you rob <laughs> I mean, I'm going like, I'm Italian, I'm going like, here's a guy that. I feel ashamed that he's Italian <laughs> to say shit like that. What Italian man to say, I don't want oral sex. Whatever. Don't want to give us, don't want to text. Us. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, Jesus. What, How does his, his wife I mean, have a straight face with that? I, I, I mean, I mean, is, is he writing the scripts for Comedy Central? You know, I mean, really. I mean, it, it, it's just this, this like, is anybody listening to this guy? Who knows? He, he might be a president someday. He's like, no, no, no. You know, yeah, I mean, stranger things have happened. Look at George Bush. You know? That's right. And you have Obama doing the same thing as Bush. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Either side of the aisle, it's all the same shit. Yeah. They just call it by a different name. It's a different person, yeah. same costume. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. Nothing changes. It's well, the same well before you leave, then, I used to be in DC. I used to live there for 15 years. So yeah. uh, I'm going to wear with a lot of the. Uh, like DC uh, arbitrary force of opinions onto each other there. Well, yeah, I just I, uh, I I just moved here. I lived here in seventy four to eighty one. I just moved back six months ago. Yeah, from uh, California. Welcome back to Richmond. I, I love it. You miss it? You know what? I don't miss California. I don't miss it. Everybody says, "Oh man, I, I like." I mean, California is super expensive, right? You know what I mean. And I mean, I lived in some cool places there. I mean, I lived in San Francisco. I lived in Alameda. I lived in Gold Country. You know. But uh, I still like. I, this is home. I'm at Grove, Virginia. I like your back. That's great. And that's cool. Yeah, it is great. I mean, when I left here in '81, none of this was happening. Yeah. You know. I mean. It, it was kind of like a rundown old town that had come back and it's like everything's been redone and you get the entire sections of the city are completely changed. Doesn't look the same. Not the same. I live over in North Side. I bought a house over there and uh, I, I love where I live. Everybody, I, I mean, I love the black, white, 
everybody's totally cool. Everybody's, it's, and it's not like that in other places. It's not, it's not. It's not, you know. That's one of the reasons I moved to Richmond, actually, first Fridays. Yeah. Uh, the, the community, going to the fan, the inviting us, the warmth of us. It's like, for me, this, uh, it's, it's a big enough city for, for me to put my arms around. You know? Well, you know it, it, I was talking to one of the neighbors the other night. I said, you know, she's telling me, oh man, I went up to Hanover County and the and 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 the white, some of the whites were giving me a hard time. And I said, I said, don't feel too bad. The only time I've ever gotten any any grief from anybody when I lived here was from Redneck. <laughs> I never got. I had been through the worst section. Apparently, the worst section is the town. And all you know, I mean, church. It, I never have any yeah. anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Everybody's been so so kind and you know and uh, it, it is. It's kind of yeah, that's for me that's what changed my mind about people moving here to Richmond. Yeah. Uh, it used to be more of a hobby. I guess maybe you grew up in DC that gives you kind of a hobby oh. mentality. But uh, here again, like the inviting homes and the kindness of the real strangers you would imagine, but like that's a real community and that's Changed my thoughts about people, and that's why I realized we we don't need a government. We can turn to each other. We can turn to our community. Oh, I, I know, I know. It, it's I don't know. I, I don't know. to the left and right. I mean, here it's, it's it's so in this town you go far left and far right. Yeah. I mean, it go you don't you don't have to go far to go to the far right. Yeah. Here, you know. The, you know, I always tell people it's like you you go the far left and far right, and they're the same people. Yeah, yeah. The far left and right. But anyway. Uh, my name is Cal. Hey man, nice to meet you. Will, you and I will be good neighbors. Oh here. yeah, okay man, <laughs> we'll my name is Rick. Richmond, right? yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. you too man. You, you take care of yourself. You too. Yeah, take good care. Bye. About 500, not 500, 50. Fifty feet down the way, at about where the fire juggling begins, where people are apt to pause, and I pause there myself. All these couples will walk by, couples and groups, talking about really heavy topics, like, you know, well, I think boycotting would be beneficial, and you get, like, all these sound bites of, you know, um, well, I can't totally agree, I guess I have a blind spot, and um, I don't think they know what the fuck they're, you know, just like, not small talk. It's like, you know, heavy, intense banner, like something's really upset them, you know. They have that sort of look in their eyes like their dog just died, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Cal's cat died earlier today. I'm terrible. But yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm wondering why suddenly this is bringing so much out in people because it's not usual, you know, like art walk banter, you know. It's like they're laid back, they're buzzed, they're talking about, you know, a color scheme or something. And you get to that point and it's like, shit, they're downstream from Cal. He's like, leeching like a barrel full of liberty into the river, you know. Kind of picture moonshine there in that toxic waste, okay? I think it's a good thing, you know. It, it makes people pensive. It's a pensive toxin, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta give people a little bit of poison to cure them. So, yeah. It's got people talking, and I think that's wonderful. I don't have anything profound of my own to say right now, but um, I'll keep making casseroles and armbands and having my own small moments of enlightenment. And I should flash my tits right now. No, <laughs> but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm gonna hang on to that last bit of dignity. Because I'm an individual and deserve that bit of dignity. Okay. Have a lovely night. <laughs>